big day for us here at 12 Pine Island. Saturday morning, the house went on the market yesterday with a very successful broker open house. Um, well attended, very fun to see some brokers that I hadn't seen in many years. The weather held for us and the water was actually beautifully stormy. So that was actually a nice feature. So we've had um, a couple showings already, which were very fun and the feedback was excellent. And we've got a big showing shortly. So I decided to come over early, grab some photos of the space. Um, and I have the house mostly to myself though. I'm pretty sure I hear Rob downstairs giving instructions for more touch-ups. So our Berdiglio Marble Fireplace by Rye Marble looks gorgeous in the space. We anticipate this being the dining room because it's got gorgeous water views as well. But in the evening, you'll get the lights from the houses on the shore kind of sparkling across the water. So it's a neat setting for the formal dining area if people choose to have one. The rest of the space is just awesome. Family, hangout, entertaining. I know where I would be sitting. Um, and it's, it's just lovely. These 12, pocket, 12 foot pocket doors open up and the new railings are finally installed, which is fun because I was always afraid Christian was going to fall off the porch. Um, here we are in the kitchen without, oh, now Rob just put his stuff on the countertop. Here's the table area that could be uh, built in or table and chairs. Again, another door outside to the deck and down. This is kind of a fun area that's still a little bit work in progress, but it's built extra deep for maximized storage without being you know, too bulky in the walkway. The glass door, the mirror doors above reflect the water outside, which is great. Um, this is kind of a fun feature that I've had in my own house and in some other houses that it's concealed for, it can either be a coffee station with your Keurig and the toaster oven, which is always that dreadedly visible appliance and we've lined the surface in a stainless so that it's a you know nice fun hard-working surface in here i show a couple bottles of jwh wine and this could easily be set up as a bar when entertaining and the other option is for those of us that need that command center with chargers and laptops and mail piles and all the signs of daily life it's a good one for that so um that's a fun practical cabinet because anyone who knows me knows I do air on the practical side as a mother of five. So the cooking area is features the great wolf range and wolf insert above, though we did um, our mill shop, or JWH mill shop did this awesome matching wood hood with a, a satin stainless, I mean a satin brass detail around it. Carol was instrumental in locating the hardware that would really make an impact on this different door and drawer style. And the backsplash is just very cool, set in matchsticks that are running vertical as opposed to horizontal, um, which matches the direction of the countertops. This is a, definitely a fun cabinet to the left of the range. I put some utensils in there yesterday, but I'm actually loving the idea that there would be your large olive oil, your large vinegar, and some of those big bottles that um, you don't want living on the counter and are actually a little too tall to fit on the first shelf of a cabinet for us height challenge people to reach. In the upper cabinet, then we've got plenty of shelves for the spices actually on both cabinets. And with the extra depth in this cabinet, you still got plenty of room to back up your, again, larger spices, oils, cooking and baking needs. Um, and again, the other one 
is over here. So where we don't have a lot of cabinetry cluttering the kitchen, everything is really well sized and proportioned to offer extra storage where possible. So this is a fun detail, the side of the Sub-Zero refrigerator. It's actually, again, extra deep because it's built around the architecture of the outside of the house. But in here is our fabulous Sub-Zero all fridge unit where you can see we keep our crew nicely stocked on Friday afternoons with Corona. Um, lift up storage above. I can't reach that, but it'd be a perfect spot to hide the turkey and Christmas essentials that only come out once a year. So usual features in a great JWH kitchen. We've got our double trash unit. We line the top of the cabinet in a great stainless steel detail, which really protects where, um, you know, sometimes things land and is usually our biggest area of touch-ups. So we're finding our clients are loving that. And we're now going back and retrofitting clients from the past 20 years who would like to add this detail. Again, we do it on the sink cabinets, um, particularly when there's an apron front sink, which is not in this case, but again, we like the detail. Um, we added a rollout shelf under here, but you will see as I caution clients, there ends up being a lot of equipment under a sink. So we end up having to modify the rollout shelf to get it clear, but it still will be good for not losing the extra sponges in the back of the cabinet. Um, let's see, oh, this is fun because this is not what you'd think it was. It is designed to look like another full freezer, but to match the Sub-Zero refrigerator. But the reality is most of us, and I do, re realistically, the potential buyer for this house does not need a full 30 inch freezer. So what we've done behind this back painted glass is create a lot of storage for trays, serving platters, um, you'll unload the dishwasher for glasses, plates, oops, cups, everything right in here um, that keeps it really handy, like I said, for unloading the dishwasher and then for moving right to the island and the table. So where is the freezer? Well, we have two options. Right here, we've got wide 30-inch Sub-Zero freezer drawers, which are great, again, because for most of us, there's only so many items that really need to be on hand in the kitchen. And more than that, they tend to get lost. So we've got this great Sub-Zero freezer drawers.